All right, are we ready to do our poetry slam? Get on going, poetry. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's poetry slam. Give yourselves a wrap, a wrap of snaps and claps to start. Yeah, yeah, nice, cool. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I like it. <laughs> I am more than excited, as you can probably tell, for this Poetry Slam. So we are going to get going with our first person up today is Robert. Come on up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, my name is Robert, and I have uh, two poems to share. This first one is called uh, Bend. So this is called Bend. She goes, we can only bend until we break. We can only take as much as we can take. In the perfect world, we can befriend our foes. But we can, that's just the way it goes. May notice we're disguised, then there's a moment of truth to realize. We rack our brains searching for the way out, but it's hard when you're full of doubt. The ghosts of yesterday are still here, they fill our hearts full of fear. To live we must tear down the walls, we have to listen to fate when we hear it call. Destiny will, destiny will show the way out, we don't have to scream and shout. It may take time to find ourselves, one day we will leave our private hell. This last one's called uh, Ugly. Yes, it's called Ugly. Life can be hard and difficult, and people put you to the test. You don't have to be, you don't have to be ugly. You don't have to give in. For if you become ugly, you just let them win. They are the monsters and not you. So don't become like them, whatever you do. They will, they will bump you as you pass by, but don't let them see you cry. Foolishness, fool, foolishness finds no reward. So leave them to their own discord. Just be yourself and carry on. It's only dark until the dawn. Good words of wisdom. <laughs> Next on up, we have Cassandra. Come on, give her a hand. She enters the hot seat. My first poem today is called Friendship. Looking back on the friendships I've had, sometimes I'm nostalgic, sometimes I'm sad. Relationships give life meaning, and without them we are more likely to feel bad. But sometimes they can become rivalries. We can be used or rejected, frozen out or betrayed. Some friendships can be toxic, but not knowing better, we stayed and tried to communicate. Some friendships are better, we are better off without. Still, to look back and see the people who we shared our lives with can be discouraging. As we learn and grow, we come to know who we need and who we don't. Different stages of our lives require different kinds of emotional support, and the old either changes or makes way for the new. When we are young, we want popularity, and that is power, being universally liked and admired. Those who have it wield it like gods. Whom they reject and whom they protect makes for your entire social status. When we start to find ourselves as individuals, we might find we need fewer friends with deeper emotional connections, relationships that go beyond the superficial. With maturity, we come to understand the value of being recognized and loved for ourselves. Friendships are an important anchor in a storm-tossed sea and at times mean everything. Thank you. That was friendship. Uh, this next one is called Meditation. Drifting like clouds, sweet as honey, flowing like water, necessary as money. A mediate meditation on deviation, a desire for salvation, an embrace, embrace of precipitation, aware and awake to faith, a collective unconsciousness that illustrates a mythology based on truth. Remembering the newness of youth, slowly replaced with the wisdom of age, swimming through the Milky Way, closing your eyes to sleep and opening your mind to dream. This reflective mood leads to experiencing solitude and the connection of all things, processing your own thoughts until the mind is clear, trusting the universe with your destiny, a pond full of swans taking in each moment before it's gone, a reminder of the endless repetition of unique versions of reality. Each one of us has a story living in the same world but apart from one another. Sometimes the future is blurry and the past full of regrets. You can't always know what to expect. Even in a world full of routine, our protest against the vagueness of time. Only in the present can we make choices without knowing the outcome. Hoping to determine the future, but nothing is secure and nothing is sure. 
Only in the moment can we hold the mustard seed of faith, the flower of our past choices, and meet our muse. Thank you. All right, this will be the last one. It's called Fairy Tale. Once upon a time, the glow of the moon illuminated the fairy tale that was your life. But you look around now and everything has the feel of a nightmare. You're alone and you're scared. Where did the light go? It is impossible to know. Sensitive to every passing emotion, you pursued your dreams with devotion. But now you can't see the forest for the trees. Every curve and bump is hidden in the darkness. Stumbling forward, you can no longer walk with ease. Distant sounds of growling, bright eyes in the night. What creature lurks on the edge of the scene? Fear pounds in your blood, trying to figure out what it all means. Where can you go to escape? Or maybe this is your last day on earth. Maybe this is fate. Where was your colorful paradise? Every, where everything was beautiful, where everything was safe. Will you become a creature deformed by lack of light? Or will this transformation pass to you and lead to a day as bright as mid-afternoon? Every fairy tale has a dark core, some evil to overcome before the hero or heroine can flourish. Magic outcomes are sealed with a kiss. Will your story end like this? A step towards adventure and romance, a happy ending and solace, reinvented for a second chance. Thank you. All right, next on up we have Brittany for some poems and read by the talented Mr. James Adamson, who will follow and read his poems after. Take it away, James. Thank you, Marissa. Oh, you're welcome. It's one of many amazing poems by Brittany Fox. It's called Plain Jane. My childhood is like a crinkled piece of paper from a faded family scrapbook that hasn't any names. You can see that there isn't a, a still that hasn't been covered in old fingerprint stains. An incognito development is found to be in every filthy frame. But what the cameraman didn't capture was the chaos, disruption, and my pain. Here I'm standing behind a smile that never failed to hide the many years of disdain. With the faith of a wanderlust and a face like plain Jane. All that takes place is in my past is summed up in two grains. I can't tell you why my slouch posture is still the same, but the noise in the background of the picture suggests the obscurity of my brain. I reckon that those are the only signs of my lack of free reign. Now the fancy font between the films is a fabrication of thy freedom drain. You're staring into the eyes of a matron whose wisdom is obtained by being rough, rowdy, by being a rough, rowdy orphan lost and deranged. This memoir is true. It, this memoir in true is a written tragedy. It's a gory panorama and a broken but heartfelt melody. Yay. And these are my poems. I have three of them to read today. Um, this one's called Harmony, and all my poems are the glory of God and the going for love. Thanks. Rivers flowing into the sky can only come to people's hearts. Vicious animals lost in the smoke dance in our addled minds. Architects, as the hero of the story, set us free to believe in ourselves. Music of pounding hearts and heavenly breezes rest on the adventurer and explorer. No worlds like towering clouds go beyond any place to stop and rest. Comfort and relaxation is found in many plans. Helping others is found in many plans. Tomorrow is a hope to talk with friends. The past never gets in that path. Poetry is self-reflection of lost chess pieces. Love is an internal struggle of always careful hands. The truth has many parameters of a world teaching forgiveness. We are here to forgive and be forgiven so we can best be who we are. A celebration encompasses all people known so that everyone there relies on who they are. Laughter is only loud when everyone laughs. So nuggets of wisdom should only make it louder. The burden placed on a stranger should be relieved by, by those upon reflection. Forests should bend as if the trees are made of light. Buildings should stand proud as if they are children of achievement. 
a poet should be as humble as his chance to actually say something, as heart should pound with the life of reception. Pain should be a story told to friends. Spirituality will be decided with God's patience. Waking from sleep is an adventure. Testimony is a reconciliation of our control. Ego is the interface between sleep and the waking mind. Power is endurance, the hope to put a smile on your enemy's face. The planets is our home and we should suckle at its breasts. The world receives the sun and light as many words. That's the first one. So this one's called My Brother and the, and the Horizon. An aura around him like the horizon, eyes that seek a person out, that show, that show a focus on who he's with. He makes mistakes, yet he is a beacon of light. His form blends into the trees, his mind spins like a sentinel. Patience pumps around from him into all things. Justice follows him like the implicit waters of life. Darkness falls away like the certainty of a father. Any need for humility rises with the ease of dropping a bad plan. Back to the drawing board like an architect in heaven. If he could fly, the world would follow him. Birds get a worried look in their eyes. The f they fly as high as they can. They, they call out in take of the beauty of the sky. Friends are bound like new leaves. Logic demands his belief. His, brows, his brow holds deep wrinkles of maturity, indications of true concern and inquisitiveness. His smile is disarming. His defense is true and immediate. His opinions are willing to bend and modify. The world is a playground he will defend and celebrate. The freedom he offers is something he will always question. A leading question is not true to him. There is no question that a light emanated from him. Its, struck, its supple mind emanated from his eyes. The calm and receding expression makes a person smile. He holds the future in his thoughts like a baby back from going around the world. His two daughters strive against him like any other daughter and father. Well, how, have, well, he only frames a way free of the import, impatience of youth. His wife holds a kind of peace that thrives in that union, while well, nothing seems withheld or hidden. Dozens of schoolmates f flocked around him as a child. An army of friends and colleagues attest to his single-minded enlightenment. Well as, with any, any, well, as with anyone, he requires proof of your reciprocation a justice that he will pave. What he takes on his shoulders is only visible when he needs to work to restore belief. Love works like seeing the world as the center of the universe and spins poetically yet goes as slow as texture, as, as tectonic plates. All vision of the universe is in heaven. All the ways of seeing beauty are the truth um, and patience of forgiveness. Hummingbirds can vary their use of time. All the means of perception are beyond this world's every opportunity. While a waterfall could reverse its flow and birds could, always, could appear out of nowhere. Touching on the fear of being evil, he was, small, he was a small boy, astounded by a mere momentary experience. God is in control and love can only go on forever, as can the hugging arms he offers. Hey. And this one's called My Dad Rustling Darkness. Seeing darkness in the most familiar of places, taking on evil intimately, a military genius fighting with his heart, offering comfort that we can set some people free of consequences. The questions he couldn't answer emboldened him to inquire, to inquire, emboldened him to ignore them. A belief we can set ourselves free of the pain of living. One bit of darkness eliminated and tomorrow is heaven without any need to die. Non-entities blink out of their existence as the only deception. We just have to accept, accept some are ugly. Nullify every evil just by accepting they exist. 
no asking that the world is for, if it is a formative process or not, because learning that some people have no potential of being saved, that we can know who they are, means there is no forging or begetting of souls. If the world is a lie, then we are already who we are. If we are learning to forgive those who don't exist, then why, then why are we here? Why are we suffering if the message isn't one of hope, but of manipulation? A beautiful man with an important immersion, who sees the dark and knows its pervasiveness. There is darkness in big and powerful ways, but we pray to forgive, not to manipulate its outcome, or learn that it doesn't actually exist. The darkness is in the ability to forgive and the destruction. Salvation is not found in pro is pointing to someone, but in trying to love and spread forgiveness. The world is so dark that it can, can seem brilliant to spread darkness as if it's light. Evil is pervasive. The only light is in seeing the light can shine from the dark, that we don't have a right to say where or when. We can create a better world for that contrition, while darkness is judgment. A powerful man who took on the depths of darkness and pain, great hands of, manipulate, of manipulating the shadows, he placed his pain close, while bubbles of light rose from his chest, and the, and the grim reaper, also familiar to him, took him with irony on his lips yet with the work to do so he can have an eternal peace after accepting the ugliness he chose. Yay. All right, we have coming up next, the one, the only, <laughs> Cool Shades Andrew coming on in. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called the preponderance of pacifism. The raw scalpel takes, your entire anatomy shakes. Bridge is broken, words never spoken. Full speed ahead, your ancestors are dead. It's a mystery in a machine, the body takes gasoline. They tell me that I'm too short. Perhaps I'm in the wrong sport. I feel good in spite of sin. To grow, you must look within. My feet burn like the plague. I'm in line to receive rations. One little passing glance, one little comment, can provide you with the fortitude and strength to climb the mountain and get through life. Attack the world and bleed out fiction. I know metaphors, but was never so good with diction. Behooves the emperor, particularly in space. Freedom fell by the wayside, and total anarchy took its place. Beethoven met his match in the Midwest. A friendly game of catch turned, <coughs> excuse me, turned sinister and diabolical. Together we're a force, even if we're only making minimum wage. Punctuation embedded in cakes, civilization on stilts. Behave the startled dragon, pass the county line. Everything is fine. My past is emboldened. Scratch the surface, drill for feelings. Whatever comes up will shake the ceilings. The cans are scattered, I own the left field. If you're at an intersection, cure cancer and yield. All hands on deck slowly invade the insect moss field. Where to go in the habitual symbolism that invokes fantasy and playtime? The devil and Calvin and Hobbes. In mass graves they serve you tea. It's all a freak show, bending of the knee. Freckles when you close your eyes, the FBI, CIA, and a friendship of spies. Seeing is believing, but not when you're cold. I'd walk like an Egyptian, but not be so bold. In her eyes, I saw astronomy, the energy that contends. Crossing fatal rivers, illness when you're at your weakest. You're intimate and vulnerable. Why can't you believe? A card game, metaphor for destruction, tantrums are thrown. On the plane, in the sea, tell fortunes, tell jokes, just don't tell on me. That was good. Great. Thank you. Well, I think we need a little bonus poem. Is it a good one? Sure, well, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, well, we think so. Well, it's my personal opinion. <laughs> we'll all be the judge of that one. We'll round it off with a little treat of James to finish us off. Thank you very much. Thank you, Come on in here. Oh, Thank you, James. That was cool. Time cloud. What one day would be experienced as 15 minutes seems like five. As the planet passes through a more dense cloud of time, teddy bears 
falling from children's hands, trees shaking in the wind, rushing to get to bed on time. Stores seem to disappear. Cars on the street are like highways, passing your hand in front of your face like the energy constant has shifted. Dances turn into mysticism. Doctors become patients. The Aurora Borealis offers its greatest shows a month before the passing of the cloud. Cliff divers are on the news. Sensationalism can't keep up. We fight to get ideas on paper. Waking up and three hours earlier we got out of bed. William Shatner seems even more out of touch. Rain has been falling heavier for weeks now. Ideas seem like natural toothpicks. Birds seem to search you out with, with its eyes. Honesty becomes a slip up. Tricks are a man are a main part of telling the truth. Maybe maybe gravity changed too. Our perspective mean means it's all on the edge of our periphery. What is a clown these days? How clean are the hands of surgeons? Ch childhood and growing up seem like a competition. How do we fit a boat in, in a bottle or a camel through the eye of a needle? Can a toy be what it is? Can God get the, the rich to listen? Everything spins on a top. Total disaster simply wasn't seen. All we saw was the most trivial signs, a meaningless weather forecast. We fight against the wind and it's a breeze. Fish rise out of the lake only to tell a joke, then it shuffles back into the water. Surrealism becomes art. We learn to care more about ourselves than about our weird moments. Some people seem angry about that. Yesterday seems so far away. The planet can't fall over like a spinning top, but it can wobble. And who knows where earthquakes come from and what it means for time to play tricks. That was a good one. <laughs> it left me with a lot of questions. <laughs> and thank you everyone for sharing your work today. And even if you didn't share and you were here just to listen with your lovely ears, appreciate it as well. Woo. Here resolves a round of snaps and claps. Snaps and claps. Snap claps. We'll see you next week for Writer's Circle. And we'll see you next September. <coughs> Is September coming up? Oh my god, September. Yeah, it's crazy. August. I know. That's wild. I like August. Enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy <laughs> August.